नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू स्टडी आई क्यू आई एम योर फ्रेंड राहुल साईगांवकर द एजेंडा फॉर टूडेज डिस्कशन इज नथिंग शॉर्ट ऑफ अ साई फाई मूवी और साई फाई सीरीज वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट न्यूरोलिंक्स ह्यूमन क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स रिगार्डिंग द ब्रेन कंप्यूटर इंटरफेस यू कैन सी द न्यूज हियर रिसेंटली न्यूरोलिंक्स फर्स्ट इन ह्यूमन क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स इज ओपन फॉर रिक्रूटमेंट दैट मीन्स वेरी सून इन ह्यूमन क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स आर गोइंग टू बिगिन with respect to the neuralink chip we are going to understand this news we'll talk about what is neurotechnology what is this neuralink and what is a brain computer interface then we'll get to know about the study and its detail at the end of the discussion we'll talk about what are the issues or what are the threats that are associated with this as well so we'll understand all these things let us begin but before that there is a small notice for all the ups civil services aspirants study iq's p2i program is going to begin in the next 24 hours so you have a few hours left to enroll yourself just visit our website www.studyiq.com you will get all the information about this comprehensive program where we will be helping you to prelims mains and interview so just a few hours left go to the website enroll now i'll see you in the class all right let's begin now this discussion is connected with neurotechnology now neurotechnology it basically consists of devices and procedures that are used to access monitor investigate and manipulate the data which is connected with the neural systems or the brain systems of humans and animals of course the human clinical trials are going to start that means earlier some trials with respect to animals have already been completed by neuralink so neurotechnologies is an upcoming field in fact countries like usa uk germany they have taken a lead in it world over if we look at the trends in neurotechnology us leads in terms of neuroscience publications with 40% of the output coming from that country alone there are many companies which are already working towards it synchron is working kernel is working blackrock neurotech it has been working for almost 20 years now apart from that in recent times neuralink has gained a lot of traction and today's discussion is about this neuralink itself we'll talk about this you can see the news neuralink's first in human clinical trials they have been approved by the fda in united states of america first let's try to understand what is this neuralink now neuralink this is the logo of neuralink it's a it's an american corporation it's a company a, a private company which is founded by elon musk and some other engineers this is a neurotechnology company which basically works towards developing implantable brain computer interface the company was started in 2016 and from the very next year it has gained a lot of traction by 2020 21 they have already completed some of the trials on animals as well so what do they do they create brain computer interfaces now what is this bci stand alone mcqs can be created on this what is the meaning of bci brain computer interface these are the systems that decode intended movement signals from brain to control outside stuff that means to control the computer in in very simple terms what what is happening is there is a chip which is going to be embedded in human brain and that chip is going to assess the signals and using those signals it is going to it is going to give inputs or it is going to give instructions to a computer meaning simply through my thoughts i will be able to activate i'll be able to work on a computer without even touching it right now we are talking about a computer or some sort of device but in future by using brain activity by simple brain activity i will be able to control say a prosthetic limb or a prosthetic hand so this is going to be a game changer and that is what neuralink also suggests it says that brain computer interfaces have the potential to change the lives for better we want to bring this technology from lab into people's home especially especially people who are who are not able to walk especially people with some sort of brain injuries brain damages etc they will be able to through their thoughts they will be able to control the outside world or control outside parameters outside equipment i would say and that is what neuralink is trying to achieve and they have announced their first in human clinical trials and the trials are named something called as prime it's called precise robotically implanted brain computer interface now this is the notification which neuralink has released 
न्यूरोरिंग क्लिनिकल ट्रायल फॉर प्राइम प्रिसाइज रोबोटिकली इम्प्लांटेड ब्रेन कंप्यूटर इंटरफेस नो वॉट आर दी गोइंग टू डू दे आर गोइंग टू इम्प्लांट अ चिप कॉल्ड एज एन वन इम्प्लांट दर चिप इज एन वन now this n1 it is a very small chip which has about 64 electrodes and these electrodes are extremely thin thinner than human hair now this would be implanted in human brain how it would be implanted not by humans it would be implanted by a robot now this robot is r1 now r1 is a robot which is going to insert the n1 chip into the human brain and this n1 chip can communicate with an app now that app has been created neuralink is also created an app that chip can connect with this particular app and whatever signals are are come are coming from the brain they will be assessed and an output signal would be given to the external device or the external interface right now who can join these trials you can see eligibility for joining the trial a person having having quadriplegia that means limited function of all the four limbs may maybe because of a spinal cord injury or or a disease called as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis for at least one year that means a person who is not able to move their hands or limbs because of some spinal cord injury or a disease they should be at least 22 years old they should have a consistent and reliable caregiver apart from that they should not have any pacemakers they should not have history of seizures or or history of mris etc again they have to commit themselves for approximately 6 years and they would be given all the expenses compensation etc would be provided by neuralink itself and the primary study is is to ensure how this chip can help these people those who are not able to move their hands or feet simply using their brain can they can they give give some orders or some instructions to the computer interface that is the primary aim of the study it is going to be game changing isn't it now the neuralink study they have suggested that it is going to take about 6 years and right now right now it is not announced that how many participants would be taken although according to neuralink they had requested the us fda food and drug administration to allow 10 participants but fda has ap ap apparently not given permission for all the 10 patients let's see how many patients would join eventually we do not know that but as of now the number remains undisclosed but fda has given approval that means human clinical trials are going to be conducted there would be at least some people who would be selected by neuralink in whose brain a chip the n1 chip would be implanted by the r1 robot we'll keep an eye on this research and as i told you this study is going to go for 6 years it's a very ambitious study what would be the output or outcome of this the output is basically to ensure that these chip devices they will be able to treat conditions like obesity autism depression schizophrenia etc meaning if a person is going through some sort of uh, some sort of uh, brain related issues if they are not if they do not have those motor skills etc then in such a scenario this chip can help them lead i would say at least a, 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 a to some what extent a normal life all right now you must be thinking sir all this sounds quite dangerous right because a chip would be installed by a robot and this chip would be there somewhere in in the brain and it is going to continuously assess the signals from the brain is it is it dangerous now you must be having this question yes are there any dangers associated with it is it just elon musk right now fda has given permission to elon musk but are there any other people who are involved with this neurotechnologies and do i need to regulate it absolutely yes Elon Musk is there Neuralink is there but Neuralink it is facing stiff competition from many other companies as i told you like BlackRock Neurotech it has been working on these implants since 2004 there are many other companies Precision Neuroscience which was founded by one of the co-founders he left Neuralink he created Precision Neuroscience and there they have simply come up with some up with some sort of a band some sort of a a tape or a sticker kind of a thing which can be simply stuck on on the on the head and that they are trying to help people with paralysis apart from that us has allowed different studies in which implants are already used where people are 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 trying to uh, people are trying to assess these signals they will help people to speak better move communicate etc so it's not just neuralink but many other companies are working right now neuralink is going to begin its human trial now question mark is 
sir, are there any dangers? Now, how do we assess these dangers? We will simply look at the studies which Neuralink has created or which they have performed earlier. Now, earlier, Neuralink in 2020 itself, they had created or they had run experiments with monkeys. And there were news reports that, that Neuralink, the startup created by Elon Musk, they wired a monkey and the monkey was able to play games only using its brain. Uh, you do get it. That what, what, what happened was there was a chip which was installed in a monkey's brain and the monkey is not even touching a computer. It's simply sitting and it's playing a game. Right? Right. So, it's, it's that kind of a thing. That's why I told you the discussion is nothing short of a sci-fi movie or a sci-fi series. You know, you, you're, you're surprised. How is this possible? Science and technology has reached to such levels. But it is not without its dangers. Why the FDA has not given it permission to for all the 10 people here is because of this particular news. Because Elon Musk Neuralink, apparently they had tested out on 23 monkeys. Out of that, 15 monkeys, they lost life. And there were also reports that the monkeys had suffered to extreme levels, some sort of uh, psychological impact on the monkeys, etc. Was, was reported. So, there are a lot of security concerns. Now, imagine if something like this happening on monkeys and now human trials are coming up, what would happen with humans? That's why less number of patients would now be uh, inducted for the human trials initially. We'll keep, a, we'll keep an eye on that. We'll keep a track on that. Now, this is the question. This is the question. Do we need neuro rights? We have discussed this before as well and I am asking the same question again. Of course, there might be a lot of benefits. As, as, you, as you saw, Elon Musk, the Mercury billionaire, he, he wants to find out solutions for spinal cord injuries. It's a good thing. But what is the process of finding out those solutions? In finding those solutions, are we violating the rights of individuals? Do we need a case of neuro rights? What if he is able to read the thoughts of people and he is able to commodify it? Right? Will the Orwellian idea of manipulating people's thoughts and behavior, will it become reality? Now, these questions will come up continuously, not just because of Neuralink, but because of many other companies, many other people involved in it. And we do need to bat for these neuro rights. As of now, in USA, FDA is the regulator. It is working towards it. It is a keeping eye on, on Neuralink. Agreed. But at the world level, we do need. We, we do need advocates for neuro rights and we do need some guidelines for these neuro rights. And many companies, uh, many companies, not companies per se, many countries are coming up. You can see Chile stands out because in 2021 itself, they have updated their constitution acknowledging neurotechnology's legal oversight that people need to have neuro rights. It's not just Chile, countries like Spain, so Slovenia, Saudi Arabia, etc. They are coming up with their own rules and regulations regarding the research on neurotechnologies, regarding the research on brain-computer interfaces. And very soon, in a couple of months, in November 2023, UNESCO is also going to meet where they are going to finalize certain guidelines with respect to these neurotechnologies. And we'll keep an eye on that as well. So, if a question comes up with respect to neurotechnology, is there a need for recognizing the rights of neurotechnology? You need to take a stand suggesting yes it's an upcoming technology and these days we talk about neurotechnology and culmination with artificial intelligence which can be a, a recipe for disaster isn't it yes there might be a lot of benefits but there there is a chance of misuse and abuse of these technologies and the research connected with them so unesco once it comes out with these guidelines those guidelines will those guidelines uh, will have to be followed even for the scientific studies like what Neuralink is doing as of now. But we'll keep an eye on these. We'll keep an eye on the Neuralink study, human trials. If there is any update, we'll talk about that. We'll also keep an eye on the UNESCO guidelines as and when they come. We'll talk about that on Study IQ. Right? So that is it in this particular discussion. Thank you for watching this video. Jai Hind.